Hello family, put your feet up because it's top 5. It's that time of the decade. Yes, you must remember, 10 years ago, we spoke about what was the best goalkeeper. Don't you remember? Of course you can. You just kids, hand you were just tiny. Well, every 10 years, we talk about the best goalkeeper in the, de in the decade, and uh, it's time to do that yet again. I'm going to tell you who I think has been the best, and you probably won't agree with it, because most of the good things that he did started at the beginning of the decade, not so much at the end. But I still think he is the best. And I'll give you the names and then you decide uh, amongst yourselves and I'll read you uh, on what it is the best goalkeeper of the decade. For me, Iker Casillas. Stars winning the World Cup in 2010. This is this decade. Went to the European Championships in 2012. By the way, in both games, in both uh, tournaments, he was in the team of the tournament. He was the best goalkeeper of the tournament in the World Cup as well, uh, with the least amount of goals conceded. He also won the Champions League with Real Madrid in 2014, this decade. Yes, he left Real Madrid in 2015, but uh, he went to uh, Porto and became also best goalkeeper and team of the tournament for, uh, for Porto, well, for himself, really. So you've got somebody that for five years he did marvellous stuff. He's 38 now, as you know, he had, um, he had a heart attack. Uh, he's recovering now, in fact, he's training again, as you know, but uh, because it, he did it at the beginning, it feels like he's not as good as others, others that I'm going to mention now. I think you have to give it to him. You have to give it to him. See how many agree with me. I'll give you all the names of goalkeepers that uh, have proven to be right at the top. And also for a long time, Ter Stegen is one of them, of course, at Barcelona. Jano Black he is perhaps right now uh, the best goalkeeper in the world. You can do whatever you want with him. Uh, he can defend deep, he can go high, uh, with the high balls, he can defend them well, he can block things, he doesn't make mistakes. There are more, of course. Samir Handanovic, doing well at uh, Inter. Gianluigi Buffon, Gianluigi Buffon, uh, forget his stay at, uh, at PSG, uh, but he's now back at Juventus, and of course he's a legend. David De Gea, and I know a lot of you will say David De Gea. Uh, Neuer, as well from Bayern and Germany too, World Cup winner. So, which one is yours? I think I defended mine pretty well. We've got a Clásico, and a Clásico that is like kind of a gift, a Christmas gift. So it appears in the middle of uh, a week where there's nothing to distract us, there's no other games on the same day, nothing else happens apart from the Clásico. Uh, interestingly enough, the, uh, the security, of course, has been a big issue. The reason why it's played uh, on Wednesday is because it had to be suspended uh, when it was put in the calendar. Uh, because there was tension in the streets of Barcelona. I spend half of my time in Barcelona and I don't see that happening now for many reasons. One of them is because that was a protest that did not come from anywhere, but it did go. So there was a time where everybody felt uh, very annoyed by what was happening uh, and it has to do with politics and the independentist movement and, and of course the, uh, the fact that uh, politicians uh, were kept and were confirmed to be kept in prison for a long time. But I don't feel that atmosphere right now. Plus there was also uh, a plan in place for this not to happen, for nothing to disrupt the Clásico which is that both teams will be uh, on the Wednesday in the same hotel, different floors. They're not going to share common areas. They're not going to meet for lunch or anything. Maybe at the cafeteria, the, in the coffee shop down the stairs, but I doubt that. Uh, there will be, of course, uh, tactical talks and all that, but it won't be uh, in places where the other team can hear. They will have a siesta and sleep in the hotel, and then they will both leave uh, with their buses, their respective buses, from the uh, hotel, which is the Sofia Hotel, to the stadium is about 300 yards. So all that uh, is going to be blocked by the police from early, day, early hours in the morning and they eventually will get into the Camp Nou. Now, nobody can stop anybody protesting inside the Camp Nou and I'm sure there will be uh, some kind of protests, but I think the classical will go ahead and it will show that we're able to organise these kind of things. And I think as well that things have changed a little bit and we started talking to each other, the two factions. I think there's more interest in, in, in showing a good face to the world. How about the football side of things? Well, you've got a, a Barcelona, for instance, that have learned to play football, counter-attacking football, actually. 
uh, and, uh, and realize the limits of their physicality, so they cannot pressure high all the time, which means that uh, teams like Real Madrid, like Real Sociedad did uh, at the weekend, forces them a little bit back, which is not a terrible problem for them, because uh, with a long pass from Piquet, or uh, two, or th two or three passes, quick passes, and then trying to find uh, Luis Suarez or Messi first, and Messi finds somebody else. Quick transitions is the order of the day for, for Barcelona right now. It's how they managed to get a point at the, uh, against Real Sociedad. And it's what they probably will apply against Real Madrid, that yes, they will pressure high, uh, because they know that if they disrupt Barcelona from the beginning, from the way they build up, is the biggest option to actually hurt them. That means because they can steal the ball from them. And right now, Real Madrid, the midfield especially, has got so much dynamism and energy and, and strength, physicality, much more than Barcelona. They will try to do that. For that, it's important that Real Madrid plays with four in midfield, which I think this is what they're going to do. They tried Isco against Valencia. I don't think it worked at all. So it will be perhaps Valverde uh, and Casemiro, one in front of the other. Perhaps Valverde likes to get into the box with Modric and Cross also involved, and with Bale and Benzema. That's what I think, because uh, seeing close up for La Liga TV, how Real Madrid are playing, they do play better than Barcelona, they do pass the ball very well, they do get the ball into the last third, but once there, there's only one player in the box and tends to be Benzema. You have a second one with uh, Valverde, and you have a third one with Bale. I think Bale will play. So a game in which it will be decided not by a lot of amount of goals, I don't think. Uh, I do feel that Barcelona have got certain advantage because even though Real Madrid play better than Barcelona right now, and you'll see that with long periods of possession that Real Madrid play with now, that's what they like to do, that's how they feel comfortable. Barcelona attack better, or at least finish more actions, score more goals. I've got more goal in them. They've got Griezmann now, who's linking really well with uh, Suarez and, and Messi. Uh, who can, he can do it from the wide areas from the left hand side coming inside, he can also help with the counter attack. It seems to have a little bit more uh, Barcelona, but these games end, end up normally 2 2. <laughs> Not all of them. I just feel that uh, this is one that Barcelona can win, and, uh, and let's see if I got it right. Everybody's hearing the stories Arteta to Arsenal, Ancelotti to Everton, uh, Ancelotti who uh, when everybody thought he was in Merseyside, he actually was in Rome, but then flew to London to listen to the offer of Everton. Not the first uh, manager to get an offer from Everton, and it's a big offer. It's a four-year deal, and uh, it will make him one of the top three paid, best paid managers in the world. Big offer. Uh, obviously, he comes on the back of um, leaving uh, Napoli, and the idea, he had a clear idea that he, want, he didn't want to get a job uh, right now. He wanted to wait until the, uh, the summer to start, well, to get energies first, uh, some of the energies back, and also to uh, start the pre-season with a team that he can mould from now on. But you cannot choose when football uh, offers you opportunities like this. He wanted to come to England, that's certainly something he had in his head. And, uh, and having flown to, uh, to London, the conversations are fluid and I think he's impressed by the ambition uh, at all levels, uh, the money available and the possibilities of taking Everton to the next level, to the level of Leicester, of Wolves, of maybe Spurs, maybe Arsenal, Manchester United. That is the plan. And Ancelotti, if he eventually says yes, it will be because he believes there is that ambition and that he can put all these things in place. Arsenal Arteta is talking, everybody knows that. Would he fit Arsenal? I'm convinced he would, for many reasons. Not only he's a former player, he has been in a situation like this as a player. He came to Arsenal to a changing room that was divided, where there were little groups, not hardly talking to each other, a quiet changing room, lack of leadership. And he came in, and in his first game, he started making noises and shouting and, uh, and, and leading. Arsene Wenger realised very early on that he got a leader with him. With Peter Metesaka, he was, who was at the team at the, at the time, they just made a lot, of, um, a lot of steps towards a united changing room and to defend the rights of the players, the things that the players uh, wanted, like the bonuses, negotiating bonuses, uh, opening up rooms for families. So uh, it all became the kind of atmosphere that eventually it became. He was 
crucial in that. It was crucial at Everton as well in terms of deciding what kind of football they were playing. David Moyes had an idea what he wanted and Arteta helped to define what kind of player was necessary to actually get that style into, uh, into the next level. So he had long chats with uh, David Moyes who trusted him completely uh, and, uh, and there was a really good relationship there. It was hard for Arteta to leave Everton. So right now, having learned a lot from Pep Guardiola and having had a lot of experience with the team, he had to do a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, from helping Sané and Sterling to improve, from helping uh, Sinchenko or Fernandinho to actually uh, develop their game to become something else, midfielder uh, to centre-back in the case of Fernandinho, uh, winger to full-back in the case of Sinchenko. He took them into, their, into, their, into his office and gave them a lot of videos, a lot of explanations, put it in practice, in training, etc. A lot of work that has been put in place that has uh, allowed him to develop his, um, his level as a coach, his decision making. He's absolutely ready, completely ready for this uh, challenge and uh, I think it would be a fascinating one as well. Many people would say that the insults that Tozulia uh, got from the Bucaneers, from the ultras of Rayo Vallecano, were deserved. Um, they call him uh, a word that you cannot mention, Nazi. Now, he has been seen, photographed, and has actually raised money for political parties or uh, brand of, brands of the military army that are linked to um, to perhaps the Nazi ideology. So that makes it uh, a little bit um, complicated and ambiguous when you actually ask, we, I think we're all in favor of, or, or we will defend anti-Nazism, no? We will all say it's wrong to be a Nazi. The thing that we should not agree, never ever agree on, is to insult anybody. To call him a Nazi as part of a conversation because he says, look, you are defending this and that and perhaps that's your ideology. And he may just say, as he's saying at the moment, that that's not his ideology, that, that uh, people have faked some of the photographs and so on. I don't believe that for a second, by the way. But you called him something next to Nazi. You insulted him. It was a whole um, stand insulting a player. And if we are going to be a different kind of league, in a time where these things shouldn't happen, it's good to start somewhere, and it's good that it happens now, but it has to continue. It's good that the stadium uh, will be punished, perhaps that stand will be, uh, will be suspended for a game or two, whatever it is, but let's take this seriously. Because he has been instances in the past with xenophobia and racism and all kinds of um, violent, uh, either verbally or otherwise, uh, incidents have taken place and nothing has been done or the fines have been very small. Rubi a Rubicon has been crossed, a river has been crossed. From then on we cannot look back. Now whenever something like this happens, the protocol that's in place should actually be, uh, be used. First, through the speakers. Stop insulting. You, should, you don't do it in the streets. Why are you doing it in the stadium? Why you behave like that? Secondly, there'll be the possibility of stopping it for 10 minutes or so, for a while. And thirdly, suspend the game. But one thing capital here happened. Albacete said, we don't want to come back after halftime. We don't want to come back into the pitch for what's happened because our play is affected. Second thing that happened, Rayo Vallecano said, yeah, okay. Third thing that happened, referee agreed. And then a call was made to, uh, to La Liga, to, sorry, to the Federation, and they both agreed that it was a good idea to stop it. So all those things have to happen for a game to be suspended. If anything happens anywhere else, we want to see the same. Because I'd rather stop a game than allow people to do these kind of things uh, towards players. So we've got a draw, a fantastic draw in the Champions League. The first thing to say is that it feels like a semi-final or quarter-final, such big fixtures. And also, there are fixtures that uh, we're not tired of. Uh, you know, it's, it's good to see City and Real Madrid meeting again, but it's good that it's actually, you know, Guardiola, who has got the La Liga so far away for him now, 
but has got so, so much hope that the Champions League, that this could be the year of the, for the Champions League, but he's going to have to do it against the most symbolic of, uh, of, of teams, against the, the biggest one in this competition, and eventually at the Santiago Bernabeu as well. So in that one, that's the one that I'm, I'm not sure who to give the favoritism, and of course, there's still a long time to go. But what I see is a Manchester City that is weaker than has been in both boxes. They still created more chances than anybody in the Premier League. They still concede the least amount of chances in the Premier League. But uh, problems at the back uh, made them concede goals and the lack of effectiveness up front makes them not to win games. I just think that they will create more than Real Madrid. They've got pace, they've got dynamism, uh, they can control the game if they need to, uh, and they've got so much, yeah, as I said, uh, talent uh, up front with, with Sterling, uh, with, with Kun Agüero as, as well, with Gabriel Jesus, with De Bruyne. It seems to be that City have got a little bit more. Not as, clear, uh, as, as clear favourites as some are making in, the, in Britain, because quite clearly Real Madrid know to how, how to compete, quite clearly, and they're getting better. But I do feel that it's a team that is defending well as a unit, lines together, they, 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 they really know now how to pressure high if they're necessary, and they will do that against Manchester City. But once it gets to the point of actually scoring, uh, it's Benzema or hardly nobody else. For Barcelona, they should be considered favourites against, against Napoli. This is the competition that they want to win. It's an important year for all of them. Perhaps the last year in which we're going to see the likes of Piqué, Luis Suárez, Messi, Rakitic, did I say Busquets, together perhaps the, first, the last time, it would be a chance for them to, um, to leave a big mark on, on their careers, of course. Uh, against Napoli that is in disarray, eight points from, um, from uh, the Champions League positions, very far away from the top, and of course we replace their, their, um, their manager, and now Gattuso is in charge, and we don't know yet if Gattuso is a good manager or not. We'll find out very soon. Atletico Madrid Liverpool, it has to be Liverpool. Liverpool best team in Europe right, right now. They don't need to play well to win games, they really, uh, in some games, are struggling to actually make an impact against, against Watford. Watford, bottom of the table. They could have dropped points, but they didn't, because eventually they have good defenders and they always score. And Valencia Atalanta, lovely contrast. Uh, how did Valencia made it here? I don't think even Valencia know that. In fact, I asked somebody of Valencia, I said, how did you make it into the... I don't know. Because it was a little bit of luck, but it was especially they know how to compete. The biggest thing that Valencia have is that they know how to compete. They believe in Celades. Celades is trying to change a little bit what Marcelino had left, put them a little bit further up the field, be a little bit more offensive, but mostly it's a counter-attack inside. Uh, and because they can compete and they've got Rodrigo, uh, there will be a danger for an Atalanta side that they like to attack in numbers. Atalanta side that started so poorly in the Champions League, finished so highly, I think Valencia are the favourites here. I cannot wait. I'll be at some of those games, certainly in Anfield, certainly at the Wanda, certainly Santiago Bernabeu and at the Etihad, or well, I'll try to, and, uh, and I cannot wait for those games to take place. We'll be discussing all of that, but for now, that's it. Remember to subscribe and remember we've got a podcast out there, the Pure Football Podcast, which is for, it's, it's going really well. I think we've, we've got 7,000 downloads in the first week, so Thank you very much, those of you that have done it, uh, uh, and those that you haven't, what are you waiting for? See you later.